Welcome back to KB's Kingdom, a very special episode today, and uh, ever wondered what that little jar is in that right hand corner? Well, it is Bora Bee's Honey, and today we have been given great access into the uh, simple operation of Bora Bee's Honey. Alright, we're going to travel around about one and a half hours west of Canberra. Australia, that's uh, Australian Capital Territory, and uh, we're going to head into Borua, this beautiful little town, awesome architecture, and very, very well preserved, so quaint, and uh, it's really cool to see a town that has kept its uh, originality like this. All right, let's get on with uh, getting some honey. All right, so first step is going to be Starting the bee bong, not beer bong, bee bong. Get good embers going. Took me a while to work that out. The smoker will keep on going out on me. Not that you would, but beekeepers are the only ones who can do this, who can light fires on a total fire band day. Huh. So on that kind of day, it's just too hot to even really. Like you don't want to be out, and you, just, you don't want to be out doing on that day. It's just not worth the risk. Uh, what's the water? Uh, it's just yeah, just uh, shavings, uh, pine shavings. Um, there's different. Um, a lot of people choose different things. Pine needles yeah, is pretty I was popular. It's just I, I just I could buy that from the shop. It's just easier. Um, I, I, for the longest time, have been using um, um, uh, the leaves dropped from gum trees. Uh, it goes quite well, uh, and um, this doesn't smell as, as harsh as this, I don't think. It's getting a nice, good fire going. Burn most of this material before putting in some more. This is taking longer than usual. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Getting the bees stoned. Just to let them know that we're here. Not too many bees here today. They're usually quite busy. And then come around to the back again. And Hive to lit. The smoke let them know that we're here. Makes them distracted. They think there's a fire coming, so they go and start eating honey in case they need to leave. Oh, yeah, definitely hear them. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull a frame just to see that it's all capped and ready to go. Yeah. 
so that one that one hasn't all been capped and so there's more work to do for them on that one so in this case we'd likely leave this one behind we'll see if we can find another one we'll try one more time see what we got on this one Had two, a bit of nectar. It looks like these. It looks like these girls might have actually started eating some of this honey. Same on this side as well. You can see there is some different types of honey here. That's a darker colour, so it's probably more gum tree, and then a lighter colour underneath here. By the looks of it, probably more town flowers. Alrighty, we'll have a look at this one here. Oh yes. That's a very beautiful honey frame. We'll take that one for extraction today. Okay, we've got the bee brush here. We don't obviously don't want to take bees inside with us, so we just gently brush them off. They don't love it, but they do, they do all right. It doesn't do any damage to them. And then we'll put this in the box over here to take inside. Checking the second level. Yep. Action. So now we're just going to see how they're going. There's less honey in here than I was anticipating when I last checked. So we'll just check this other box. They may not need the third box at the moment. It's not very many bees. This hive may have swarmed some point recently. This should be crawling with bees. Pardon? Yeah, quite possible. Let's see what we've got on here. From the top this box looks pretty good in the way of capped honey. Getting a few grumpy girls now. There we go. You can see the um, specks of pollen that they've put in there. They've made bee bread out of it. They add pollen and nectar together and it sort of ferments. So we've got a probably a dandelion pollen just there. I'm not sure what the dark one would be. You can see the girls are drinking the nectar here because I've smoked them. They're loading up in case they need to leave. But definitely in this hive, we won't take any more honey off today. Checking the brood box. Just gonna take a look in the brood box as well while we're here. What we've got here, this white thing, it's a queen excluder. What it does is um, the queen is bigger than the worker bees. We can actually see here we've got a drone. That's a male bee. He's quite big compared to his sisters. And he's actually stingless as well. So you could have him on your finger and he couldn't sting you. Another one here. Um, I'm not sure why they're above the Queen Excluder. They shouldn't be. We've got some different color ones here. We've got a black one. We've got an orange and black one. Different genetics. 
But essentially what that does stops the queen from coming above this excluder and laying where we want the bees to be putting honey instead. So in this frame we have uh, some nectar around their sides here, got a bunch of pollen at the top and I'm just going to see if I can see some eggs, not on this frame and not on this side either. It's different, this hive is definitely not doing as well as we'd want it to, try and find out why. So you yep. can see why now that this hive is not not booming like I expected it to. They've actually got some swarm cells here. So these are new queens that have been raised, that have already been capped. So we should be seeing them emerge soon. We can actually see here that this one that that bee is on top of has actually been chewed out. We can see, uh, see the googly eyes. Adopt. And we've got some more swarm cells, queen cells I should say, over this side as well. So we should see some queens emerge from there soon. We have some cat brood over here, so that's, a remote, that's left over from the queen was here. Before she left or before she died. And we've got down the bottom these popcorn type ones, they're actually drones. Drones are a lot bigger as you saw earlier than standard bees, so they need bigger cells. When they get laid in the standard cells, they have to build a dome over top to allow room for them. So this hive will requeen itself hopefully within, and, and be laying again within the next 21 days or less. Hopefully then we'll see some progress. On inspection, we have found that the Queen has decided to uh, upgrade and go to a new premises and taken a whole heap of her loyal subjects with her. So basically the hive has swarmed, for a better terminology. So a whole heap of the bees have left, the Queen has gone, a new Queen is emerging. So uh, what Carl is deciding to do is we're going to remove the bees from what is left of the hive. He's going to freeze those off and keep all the structural integrity of the hive all together. And when uh, time is right, he can put those straight back into the hive. And uh, once our little beautiful little honeybees will come in, they've got a home all ready to construct. Okay. So in this one we've got what's called a long langstroth or horizontal hive. It's a little pet project for me. It saves all the heavy lifting. You can open it up from the back and the entrance for the bees is out the front. I've got these individual cover boards here so that way as the colony starts off from here and expands as we might add a box, we just add more frames and cover as we go. These are fairly calm, these bees typically, but we'll still smoke anyway just to give them something else to distract them. We're just checking for signs of the queen today in this hive, especially after what just happened with the orange hive. So we'll just look for eggs and larvae, make sure that they're in healthy condition. 
Got some honey frames down here. And typically the, the brood will be in the center, approximately here. These plastic frames a couple of weeks ago, and they're already drawing them out, adding the wax to the foundation shape, and loading them up with nectar. You can see it glisten in the sun there. Doing really, really well. They're even starting to cap some of the top up there. They would have evaporated that nectar down to below 18%. And once it's capped, we can call it honey. That'll be perfect. So we've just pulled this frame out here just to have a look at the brood. We can see the capped cells there. That's the pupa stage. From there, we'll see some bees emerging. In fact, could well be a bee emerging in the next few hours from that one there. Some more drones, the big boys. The white pearly things you can see in the cells are larvae. They're getting fed. Eventually they will be capped as well. They start off very, very tiny. Uh, you may, may see down here this even smaller stage. Got some capped drone brood here, just as a side note, and and some honey around the top. This is very this is a very typical brood pattern, um, where they put honey around the top. They might have a pollen layer as well, and then they'll have a brood, half circle of brood. This this is actually all filled out through here. There's larvae in just about every cell, so that'll be capped off pretty soon. Okay, have you seen, so... Yeah, you can just see. Just see the speckles. But yeah, so that's the, oh yeah, that's the one I can see. Uh, yeah. Sort of. It's always best to, there's a, there's a glisten in the bottom of the cell. Yeah, I can see that from here, but through the camera. Yeah. But yeah, I can see where that one's coming out. Mm. You can see one trying to hatch. <laughs> I can hear them, but they're not chasey, chasey. Once they get a target, they'll just keep it. Target required. Okay. <laughs> They're female, of course they are. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to deny it. Extracting the honey. Capping's off here with the spike. Cole is trying a new way, uh, process of using a spiked roller to pierce the uh, little combs of where the bees have been. And uh, that's just to pierce the uh, wax and uh, before it goes into the centrifuge and extract the honey, he's trying some new uh, techniques and uh, I think it really works out. Not too bad. I'd prefer the knife method, but uh, let's uh, continue on with the video.
then that goes into the extractor. So Carl has uh, got all these frames ready for extraction or ready to go and he's multi-million dollar, no, just kidding, uh, extraction machine coming uh, from Italy and uh, this is going to make the process a little bit quicker and a little bit easier than having to hand spin those frames and remove the honey from the frames themselves. Now. There's a couple of new processes that he has invested in and uh, I'm going to show you what he has done. Now what we've shown you is basically only two hives in the background or in the backyard and this is going to be the backyard borer honey version. And he's got uh, hives all over the region uh, including yellow box my favorite but look at all of these frames that he has to extract and he does this as a labor of love and uh, it makes an amazing natural product and uh, I can't believe how good this stuff tastes. All right, so what he's got here is the new little frame machine or little, uh, let's say a popping machine. These are the frames that we, uh, or that he uses and uh, they've got like a little bit of a, a wax film with little wires on there and they've got a little uh, indentation and it lets the bees give themselves a way to uh, get going and make the uh, the hive as you can see in his little display case right there Video. right so he's got some frames right. in the machine and let's go In the power on. Sticky, sticky. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to do the auto cycle, which it apparently figures out how heavy it is and go slowly to start supposed to this is kind of scary first time Start to see it hitting the edges now. Yep. So I'm just going to slow down and do it in the opposite direction. Oh, smell that! <laughs> Funny you folks at home could smell this. Oh boy. if you like. So we heard a bit of a bump and we've had a bit of a blowout. One of the frames has come apart. So that's suboptimal it's, but it's part of it. It's why I'm transitioning to plastic frames because this doesn't happen. But this is still salvageable and that we could cut that out and use what's left of it as honeycomb. Just scoop that out. Push it like that. Got a lot of wax flake in it, but we'll clean that up later. It's quite a light colour, that one.
Oh yeah. It's got a super fine filter here. Um, to get all the bits and pieces that we don't really want to have in the honey. Go grab some honey. It's a bit of weight in that. Yeah, that's about seven kilos. Mm. That's what we'll do now. Pull that in. So after a short period of time, the uh, honey is starting to filter out and filter down and uh, we need a little bit of heat here and there to uh, make that honey uh, just a little bit more runny. Hu runny honey is the best. Alright, so all of that goes straight down into to create a product just like I'm using right there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. If you like this video, hit that like button. It gives me confidence. It should make you feel warm and fuzzy too. Please follow Burrowa Bees on Facebook and uh, look, try and find their products around the Canberra region, even uh, out as far as Young, Murren Bateman, all the rest of it. And uh, you can uh, watch my channel and learn how to cook amazing dishes using this fantastic product natural 100% from uh, a really pretty region of New South Wales once again thank you so much for watching if you like this video hit that like button gives me confidence should make you feel warm and fuzzy too don't forget to uh, share this video with all your friends on all platforms and social media if i've not already said so hit that notifications bell you'll be notified every time a new video goes up and if you uh, want to uh, eat as tasty as i do and cook as tasty as i do and learn where i get some of my produce and how i do it well, you need to come and join the family, my family. Hit that subscribe button and you'll never miss another one of my videos again. Um, I've got a bunch of uh, brewer honey that I can play with in the kitchen. And I will catch you next time. Bye.